All right, guys, let's dive right into it. The biggest news of the week and possibly the greatest sports comeback we have ever seen. Tiger Woods uh, did what so many people thought would be impossible. He won another major, and this wasn't just any major. It was the freaking Masters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tiger posted a round of two under on Sunday, giving him a total of 13 under on the weekend, which was just good enough to edge out second place finishers uh, Xander Shafley, Brooks Kepka, and Dustin Johnson, who all finished 12 under. Defending champion Patrick Reed finished his weekend at two under. So guys, this was Tiger's first major victory since 2008. He now has 15 major victories, five of them being green jackets. Mm -hmm. So I'll be the first to admit that I was way wrong about uh, Tiger's chances to win this last week. I really was, but that's not what we're talking about here. <laughs> <laughs> that's not so. Oh, and a good double move there, but just way too hard off the glass. Oh, here's Williams again, and Williams all over the floor. He controls this one, being passed around the top of the key. Back to Williams, thinks about the three-pointer briefly, but then moves it back to Wahlbeck. Wahlbeck makes a nice move. Euro steps his way in and lays that one in perfectly. Now, number four for Stevens Point, it's Bublitz, and he's able to get the pass off to the corner and sinking that one. Taking shots like swish, that's Nate Dodge. He reigns another one, and of course, Nate Dodge off to a hot start, no surprise there. Yeah, no well, great pickup by Pittsburgh right there, looking for somebody to replace Ryan Chazier for this upcoming season. Well, and that was all the talk, too. I mean, almost everybody in their mock drafts, and we said it here, we thought Devin Bush was probably going to go to the Packers, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, obviously, the Steelers heard yeah. that talk as well. They wanted him more, so they jumped up and grabbed him at number 10. I'm switching. Now that oh, now that Macar so is now that Macar is on that Colorado team, I mean he's coming off a Hobie Baker Award, a national championship appearance. He comes out, he scores. He scores the He first, scores a yeah. goal on his first shot in his first NHL game in his first period ever. I mean that kid is amazing. 19 years old, he provides a spark. Jake, 14-14 tie here at halftime. Break it down for the folks at home the first half. Yeah, Ben, I don't want to say it was completely unexpected, but hey, it was a little bit unexpected that we're at a 14-14 tie here. Again, we've mentioned it throughout the game, but the, this Oshkosh Titans team ranked number 10 in the country. So a uh, pretty big accomplishment that the pointers are tied 14-14. But here's Grandis, and he's got help. He moves it to the center, and what a save by Jalev, who may have hurt himself a bit. He took a second to get up and he's still not up. There he finally finds his feet. The Pointers beating the Titans 27-21. Jake, I can't believe this just happened. I really can't believe it either, man. This is, I, I hate to say it, but you come into this game against the 10th ranked team in the country. You don't really have all that high of expectations. And the Pointers football team comes out, puts out a fantastic game. They overcome so many different things throughout this game, being at penalties, turnovers, everything like that. They make the most of the situation, and indeed, they're going to get out of this game with a 27 oh, 20 win. What a, what a game, Ben. If you are a new coach and you're coming in, and you realize, take a look around the league. Like, coaches only last two or three years if you don't start winning games right away. If you come into the NFL, never had an NFL job before, never didn't have a winning record as a college coach, you're going to do everything possible to make sure that you have the best chance to win. And that starts with drafting your quarterback, a kid who you've recruited, you've watched, and you've been in love with since he was 15 years old. So, And that kid is not named Josh Rosen. He's named Kyler Murray. The Tampa Bay Lightning, who won the President's Trophy in the regular season with 62 victories, got eliminated by the Columbus Blue Jackets in just four games. That's called a sweep, folks. Prior to this, the Blue Jackets had never even won a playoff series. Tomahawk, Wisconsin, a bad turnover there. Though, and what a save by Alex Gilev. A fantastic glove save. He ends up on his rear end. The GNC player of the year turns the puck over right in front and once again bailed out by the Russian wall. Welcome back to the Sports Hub right here on SBTV. I'm Jacob Senholz. Again with me, Malik Jackson, Michael Wengen. 
The 2019 NBA playoffs are just under a week old, and we have already had some interesting things happen in a couple of the series. In the Eastern Conference, the number three seeded Philadelphia 76ers are surprisingly tied at one game apiece with the six seeded Brooklyn Nets, who stole game one against the 76ers with a strong performance from their star, D'Angelo Russell. One series that I know is not going to go seven games is the Rockets and the Warriors. Oh, yeah. Again, sorry yeah. to say it, Malik. I know you're not, uh, you're off camera, so you're not able to defend yourself today. Yeah. But the Rockets, man, they can't win. They can't beat yeah. the Warriors. They talk themselves into it every mm -hmm. year. They think they can do it. You, they, you, they'll, you can throw any numbers you want at it. They can't beat the Warriors, and I stand firm on that. They might get one game, but you yeah. want to see it. You want to see a series that's going to go yeah. five games? Look at that series. And, they, and then going beyond that, the passing attack looking very similar be, uh, for both teams. Both teams have hit on a couple big throws. Both teams have been intercepted. And listen to these numbers. Uh, listen to these stats here. For Oshkosh, uh, Kyle Radovich is 10 for 15 with an interception, 105 yards, and his longest throw is 34 yards. Max Harrell is 10 for 13 and an interception for 110 yards, and his long is also 34 yards. So almost identical stat lines for these two quarterbacks today. There is no way if they draft Kyler Murray, there is no I way that, that, that they keep continue. a second-year quarterback and a first-year quarterback as their number one and two options. They're going to trade Josh Rosen at some point and bring in a veteran. Like, they will get rid of Josh Rosen. That's pretty much exactly what I was going to say. National championship, yes, of course they can win one. But listen to these names that they're losing. Tanner Cardi, Stephen Yikes. Bovey, TJ Rue, Ryan Bittner, BJ Duffin. I mean, these are all guys that have been here for, besides for TJ Rue, all these other guys have been here for four years. They've been starting for four years. Stephen Bovey and Ryan Bittner are your starting defensemen every single night. You're losing both of them. And then, of course, the All-American captain, uh, Tanner Cardi. So... Even though they are bringing back most of their team, and this is an extremely deep and relatively young team, they're losing some uh, very, very tough guys to replace. So, no, I don't see an undefeated season next year. I just think that the West is a stronger division, and I think right now the Sharks look to be the best team in that division. I think they had a really close call with another extremely talented team in the Las Vegas Golden yeah. Knights. But they scraped the by. Uh, they scrape by and scrape their way out of that series. Now they're leading an Avalanche team, which is another team that's so young and so loaded with talent. Nathan McKinnon, superstar. That guy's incredible. But it's another team that uh, just when you hit a team like the Sharks, it's over, hard to overcome in the playoffs. So uh, I do think that the Sharks can win it without Pavelski. But uh, knowing Pavelski and the fact that he's a hockey player, he'll be back. He'll be back, especially if they make the finals. Yeah, I completely agree. It's got to start with the starting rotation. I mean, they've got to be better than they were last year, and they've got to be deeper than they were last yep. year. They relied too much on the bullpen all season long. And uh, besides for that, I think uh, you've got to beat – I just mentioned a second ago, you've got to beat the teams that are worse than you in your, in your division. You've got to beat Cincinnati. You've got to beat the Pittsburgh Pirates. And then, of course, you've got to take games away from St. Louis – and the Cubs as well. But uh, you got to beat the teams you're supposed to beat. Brewers had trouble doing that last year, and that's why they were forced to play game number 163. Bingo.